gone so long Stepped out of the woods Well, I was misunderstood But in light of it all Well, I sit back and check their disguise Their dark, shallow eyes Got lost in the haze of So I sit back and watch I see all of their mass soon appear I long for the words From this place I'll disappear
welcome back to the journey to bushcraft so uh, today what I thought I'd do is a uh, bit of a follow on from the last previous video that I did uh, I had quite a lot of messages saying um, you know how did I get a fire going and uh, why do I use that kind of method and how do I use them uh, what sort of methods do I use and uh, even one lady said that I made it look quite easy to do the, the fire lighting and, and how, how did I make it so on um, fire lighting can be quite easy uh, providing you uh, use a few principles um, firstly with the, the previous video I used birch bark uh, which is renowned for, for taking a spark really really well uh, I was a bit nervous on camera um, as I always am um, I was kind of hoping that I get it right first time um, what I actually did was I don't know if anybody notices in the video but I, I'm scratching a pile uh, and there is a black ember in there um, obviously not sorry not an ember there's a black ash from um, what I actually did was scrape it up try it have a go at practicing it first and then continued to scratch afterwards put it out this extinguished it and then carried on scratching and then uh, put a spark into it for the final one um, so yeah so that that that's what I did with that one. Uh, what I'm going to do today is uh, another quite simple way of, of lighting a fire um, and that's the different sort of stages of, of wood uh, being from the matchstick size dry standing branches, uh, the twigs that, that snap and they, they crack and they make quite a, you know, when, when they're coming from the, from the tree. Um, one of the key things to, to take note from that is that the tree is dead standing. Um, or it's a fallen tree uh, that's been down quite a while and it's it's dry as a bone. Um, obviously, if it's on the ground, moisture will come up from the ground and some of the twigs can be wet from that. Uh, so try and get the branches that are higher up or, or like I say, dead standing ones, one of your best bets, uh, and it's quite over sheltered. Okay, so uh, talking about the the matchstick size um, twigs that are here, um, one of the sort of the key things that I always take with me when I go into the woods, when I'm going to use this method, is something that I learnt when I was on a, a, a basics, you know, a, an induction into into bush, bushcraft uh, course. Um, and they said that when you think that you've got enough this size, go and double it so that you've got two. So that if you think you've got enough with one, double it to make sure. Once you've got your flame, you put one over put the other one over the top guaranteed that's going to be established uh, by the time you start putting on your, your next size um, twigs and branches and whatnot so you've got your matchstick size ones then you've got your there's a bit of a variation in here but your pencil size ones or your your finger size ones these are all dry I've snapped all these off as well what I'm also going to do today is basically I got the uh, a dead standing tree uh, that was say uh, I don't know 15 foot or so I chopped, cut it down with a saw um, and then I, I, I chopped it down with these sections a few of those sections split into smaller with the insides bone dry now it's been raining quite heavily recently uh, everything's wet through here so this fire is quite essential when you're outdoors and um, you know and you, and you want to use it for boiling water for keeping warm for uh, various cooking you know uh, various things like that it's essential that you take every sort of um, precaution to make sure that you're successful first time because you're burning up quite a lot of calories um, so for this one what I've also done is I've uh, cut down into sections uh, to get to the dry stuff in between I'm also going to make some feather sticks with this as well um, and then on the ground to raise it up off the ground what I'll do is I'll have a platform like this four or five of these sort of size sticks uh, and also when it's like that it allows the oxygen uh, which is essential for fire to get underneath it and to give the fl uh, flame every chance of igniting properly
Now, it has to be said that not all bushcraft has to be a fire, a flint, a steel, all that kind of stuff. Whenever I go out into the woods, I carry a box of matches. But it's an old plastic paracetamol container uh, with some black tape around it um, and also some wet and dry glued to the top. Now, all I've got here, inside here, is some really horrendously rubbish feather sticks. Um, but what I've done is I've thinned the wood down. Uh, normally what I try and do is make some bigger ones, uh, some nice big bunches, um, and then just place them over the top, get a match, strike the match, place it underneath, and then get this. That's what I'm gonna try, uh, well, that's what I'm gonna do now. Um, we've got a nice platform so the air can go under, and we've got, I've got everything to hand, so I'm not having to get up and waste time and, and go elsewhere. So, a match. Straight away, I want to be putting that over there, and then likewise with this one, just crisscross them over the top, nice and spread out so that there's plenty of air can get in. Still got all these as my next piece. And that's pretty much it. That's going to go now. Once I know that that's lighting, going quite well, I'll then add on top of that the next set of sections, the pencil size over the top. and then just plonk them on top like that. Don't have to be pretty, it has to be effective. In a situation like this, you want to be getting a lot going soon. In the bottom. Let's get that wood on top there as well.
it with a flame, with a fire. It's not going out now, it's fully sustainable. Uh, I've got plenty of water, but I to put it out correctly. I've dug it back to the earth, uh, down a bit. Nice platform there. Um, I just need to say that it's essential that you have plenty of water uh, and put it out. Then obviously all I'll do uh, once I've done, once I'm finished cooking and, and whatever else, or if I boil in some water that I've acquired from a stream or, um, or whatever, um, I'll make sure it's put out properly. Uh, I'll douse it with a good couple of good few liters of water, um, and then I'll disperse everything properly as well. Okay, so where we're at now is, uh, that's where the fire was, I've emptied a litre of water on it, uh, I'm just going to empty another litre, um, I've squashed down and rubbed in uh, and stuck holes in to the ground uh, with a stick uh, and then put water on um, so that the, the water gets underneath. Um, all the big sort of twigs uh, and branches and stuff that were still in there. Uh, got doused in and whatever else and uh, thoroughly wet through so uh, that's that now we're pretty much uh, done and dusted I've got another litre of water I'm going to put on here uh, and then I'm going to cover it over with all the stuff that's uh, around the size that I cleared uh, from the beginning and once I'm finished that you'll never know I was here alright guys so this is the spot now, uh, I've moved all the earth back over, threw some twigs and whatnot back over that, uh, squashed everything down and threw the twigs over, um, so that's pretty much about it, uh, I know that it's safe to leave now, I know that there's no chance of it uh, reigniting, everything's been thoroughly doused and wet through, um, and that's that. Right guys, so that's a quick video. Um, that I thought I'd do in response to a few of the questions that I was asked. Um, in all honesty, when I'm out uh, for the day or or whatever, um, I very rarely have a fire. It's the, it, I don't believe in needing them. I take a meth burner or I'll take a, a wood burning stove or something like that. All right, it's a fire in a wood burning stove, but uh, I don't believe in having a fire unless I'm going to be somewhere overnight or or whatever and uh, even in that case it's not the first thing that I do is concentrate on setting a fire um, unfortunately whilst I'm out walking and in the woods and whatever I see fire scars everywhere and debris that people leave and it's it's heartbreaking in all honesty um, I hate it and I, although I understand the reasons why people have fires and, and the, the importance of fire I also respect uh, fire and I respect the damage that fire does and the fa I respect the, the, the damage that we as human beings do uh, to woodlands and parks and whatever by having fires and not properly uh, extinguish them, extinguishing them uh, and putting them out properly and taking away our rubbish. Um, so yeah, I don't want to rant on or anything like that but 
um, I kind of did a video there and I also wanted to equally say how important it was uh, that we do leave no trace, that we do uh, you know, put it out properly and, and, and take away all our, our rubbish and stuff like that. Um, more importantly so than actually showing you how to do a video on lighting a fire is the fact that you know uh, it's put across the importance of putting out a fire properly and making sure that you can't see that you've had a fire there once you've finished. Um, so that said, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you found it informative and, uh, and useful. There is many, many ways of lighting fires. Again, there I used a match and some feather sticks and, and then some, you know, matchstick size uh, twigs and, and then to the pencil size, finger size, uh, you know, and that was it. Um, yeah, I hope you found it informative and stuff. There's many, many ways of using birch bark and uh, cedar bark and bow drills and embers and all those kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, there's something that I'll look into in future videos, but just for now I just thought I'd do a quick simple one um, on one of the most useful, you know, and one of the most common ways of, of lighting a fire. So again, I hope you found it useful and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you later.